Hello and welcome to UK Horror Scene. I'm Tony. This is the crew, minus Sarah, who had to leave early. It's her dad's birthday. Priorities. Sarah, please, come on. Anyway, we're here in the room, hanging with Gav Steele and Dixon Barker, the filmmakers, the creative minds behind the quirky Brit flick horror, Preternatural. Let's find out more about it. Dixon Barker, Gavin Steele. All right, Gav, Dixon, thanks for joining us. Uh, your film, Preternatural. Yep. Tell us about it. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, what would you like to know about it? So yeah, uh, well, it's- um, For anybody that doesn't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, which is a lot of people. Um, so Preternatural is a micro-budget movie um, about two guys, two filmmakers that set out to make a film, and uh, the long and the short of it is they find out the film is making them. Yeah, and you, you say micro budget, it was super low budget, right? How much did you spend on it? We spent uh, 100 pounds, yeah. Wow, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of an experiment to do the movie. Uh, we didn't, we, I made my first feature and that was a grand, not a lot more either really. But this time around it was like, well, how can we do this and make a film fairly cheap? And it's kind of an experiment because so many people yeah. can do films nowadays and make films with SLRs and production they can do themselves. And it's like, well, if we can do that, but how can we do it really cheap? And it wasn't, well, it wasn't supposed to be really cheap as in... Well, we started with the budget, really. I mean, we initially said, can we make a feature, uh, feature film for 50 pounds? Uh, which of course you can, you, know, you can, you can make it for free. But then um, as things went through and as kind of ideas evolved, we decided that actually, let's see if we can make the whole feature for, for 100 pounds and keep it obviously watchable, enjoyable, and also unique as well. Because, um, you know, I thought, um, this is somewhat true, you know, a film usually, not always, lives and dies by a script. So I said, well, if, if um, we can write something, or I, can, I can put something together that's, you know, uh, interesting and, as I say, uh, different from a lot of stuff out there, then surely we don't need a huge amount of money to, to do that. Yeah, I think um, George, George, not really quite, I think it was George Clooney, he said, um, talking about scripts, he said, you can make a bad film from a good script, but you can't make a good film from a bad script. <laughs> yeah, it's been said quite a few times. <laughs> also, yeah. having less, I always try and apply the rule, less is more. So having only £100, like, well, okay, great, what have we got? And we look around at our surroundings, our locations around us, what do we have? And legends as well, because we use a few folklore-type tales around our way to <laughs> into the script and stuff. And, yeah, it was yeah, £100, but, you know, it wasn't... It wasn't supposed to be like really a hundred, we were just trying to make a movie as cheap as we could, really when it came down to it. Hence why we were like cast and crew as well. Yeah, and yeah. I did all like production and post-production as well myself. Which is quite nice, you got complete creative control and I could, I could go which was, yeah, from yeah. your script. It was, it was intended to be an experiment, yeah. Yeah, first and foremost. Um, and hence, you know, and we had to work with the sort of constraints. And it came out £100 really, so it was, you know, it was quite Yeah, I mean, it, no, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like an experimental film. You feel like you're watching a complete film. And when, when, what do you think? <laughs> what are you doing there? Oh, that's good. What's, what's with the dancing elephants? What's that about? But, um, no spoilers. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, but you shot it over a period of, what, six months, did you say? Yeah, pretty much. We yeah. were shooting like every, um, how would, it's quite, it's a really unique way, I don't know if yeah. I'd shoot it but again, but I possibly would, where we'd shoot every week, one day for a week. We shot for f three, four hours, of a week, once a week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and between that time, I could actually edit the scenes that we'd shot, and then we could see if stuff's working or stuff wasn't working. Occasionally, things wouldn't work, so we'd go back to go, okay, how can we do whatever to apply this to make it better. But generally it all worked and it's a strange way of shooting and editing. Now, Kevin Smith did it on Red State, his the film. So it's the same sort of principle, we got to the end of our film and we pretty much edited it. Yeah, there was a lot of time we cut. pretty much shot the last stuff, which was quite a weird thing to do. Yeah. And because his script was so tight, I didn't have to do like an uh, edit, then another edit, then another <laughs> edit. The first edit round, I was like, yeah, it works. I mean, that led to, I suppose, problems in itself, where because I'd, um, yeah. well, I'd done a few bits, but I, at that time I was writing comedy, um, and I was working with a guy, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, actually, uh, called a guy, Bernard McKenna, who, who'd done a lot of stuff for BBC and Monty Python. So I'd been writing comedy, or that uh, sort of black comedy, which is obviously um, a lot shorter and sharper. So what happened when we shot the movie, when we came to film the script, um, I obviously you work it out, but the scenes were so short and kind of tailored that we needed certain scenes to to extend out to let let it breathe a little bit more than what was perhaps on the paper. I think as well. 
Which wasn't too bad because it was just a case of me in the editing room going, okay, what stuff have I got on the cutting room floor? I can just pull back up and go, what tree yeah, I can use that and just chuck <laughs> stuff in and make little bridges between how tight his script was and stuff. But all in all, it worked pretty well and came out at a hundred quid budget. Yeah, I mean, you, you were saying that, I mean, the film is about, they find that the film is making them. Yeah. But did you find, <clears throat> due to the process and the way you shot it, because yeah. you were shooting it once a week and you were kind of, yeah. did you find that when you were watching stuff back, you were getting different ideas? Because I'm guessing you had a complete idea when you, when you started it. Yeah, yeah, that's more to do with me. <laughs> film. Um, so there were four or five different drafts of the actual film. Um, and one was like a crime drama, and, and, and the other drafts were uh, more structured, more traditionally structured, I suppose. So it was beginning, middle, end, and it, it was fairly easy you know, to follow in that sense. Um, but yeah, the more we kind of got into it, um, the more I wanted, and the more we wanted to, to change things. Sometimes the game is this mouse, like, we're doing this, let's do this, this is nuts, let's go with this. And, um, and then lock some, the script, lock the script before you shoot. them up and say, um, let's do this, let's try this, but we could do that. And that was again the point, which I, I think is why we think it is somewhat of an experiment, because yeah. even though the script was locked in whatever form, it was fun to go, actually, let, let's try this, and actually, maybe we can do this, and if we chuck this in there, this would mean this. But um, it was never, for me, um, how I pitched it to Gav and how I pitched it to, to Brian, who came on as executive producer, was it was never a saleable film. It wasn't a necessarily a, a commercially viable film and something that could be sold. It was just a product of, of ideas, really. It's just that these are some ideas. This is what you can probably do with £100, or what, what we could do with £100. And... Um, Sort of is what it is, really, and that's. <laughs> well, see, I mean, you, you, you know. say you say, <clears throat> you know, you don't think it was commercial, but I think I think it would do very well on the. I can imagine it being very popular on the on the festival circuit. <laughs> no, because I imagine. That's that, so. Because it won't. No, it's a little unique, isn't it? It's, it? it's yeah, not it's, straightforward. It's funny. It, it starts yeah. out with the auditions. It starts out quite nice and quirky. <laughs> and it is, well, I don't know where I'm going. Where this is going? But it's quite clever. And then they're off in the woods because they decide to do it on their own. And like, yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's all this. Um, there's, lot, there's lots of things that work with it, lots of nice little quirkiness. But the reason I, I was asking whether it did change along, because the ending just seemed like, you know, the last third all of a sudden you feel like you're kind of twisting into something completely different. Yeah. And you kind of get elements of that throughout the middle, throughout the yeah. film, especially around the middle, you've got, I won't want to say too much, but yeah. especially around the middle, you start getting feeling that there's something not quite right, that they're going off and the, the guys are starting to freak out a little bit more. But especially by the end, and it's like, it's Man, it's just place. reared into something completely different. It's like it's, yeah, I, I yeah. think for me, not to the detriment of the film. It just it just yeah. feels like it veers off into something different. No, we wanted to try and do that. There's two different unique film styles going on in the yeah. movie because I was doing a real handheld gorilla style first point to the point where it get, it, there's that massive flip where it changes to a lot more stable. That was always stuff. planned. There was always going to be um, a flip and a huge flip that would, um, and that caused a couple of. Um, Issues again, actually, you know, um, if I go ahead and bought it, I said, oh, there's no real uh, indication of this, it just changes. And I said, yeah, and I think some of that for me comes from, uh, I watch a lot of, a lot of uh, different cinemas, I imagine a lot of people do. And for me, actually, that was probably from Japanese cinema, actually, probably specifically Japanese horror cinema, which tends to build and then will often just flip with no yeah. real. Um, you know, uh, way into that, it would just suddenly change. And I thought, well, that'd be really interesting if we could just change it up, which is really jarring. We, we well, I, Think I think we both actually that it would be more jarring than people have found it. I think when we first yeah, we screened did. this, well, yeah. Well, when you gave me the script from the yeah. ago and I read it and I was a bit like, it just wow, changed. man, yeah, I've never course. seen this in yeah. a film before yeah. and I don't know how this is going to go down. <laughs> and that's again that that was that's now become the USP of the film, which I hoped it would is that actually check this movie out because half of the movie it runs like this. Then we're just going to kind of flip it on you. Um, without really introducing that, and you know, and why not? And uh, but the people that people that saw it and people that watched it first off when we first showed it to a public audience, um, I don't think there was there was one there might have been <laughs> that came up to us and said that was really confusing or that was they might have said that the film is slightly confusing, but that point is they were like yeah it's great because well they accepted it why not yeah they 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 just took it on board you know but I mean I think a lot of what helps that is that it's, a, it's you've got a very gentle 
intro into it. You know, it's very humorous. <laughs> the characters are both very likable, obviously. <laughs> well, <laughs> but the characters course. are both very likable because they, they, they come across quite harmless, you know, because they're, they're a bit buffoon. Sure, yeah, 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 totally. That's, 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 that's not really a character, is it? It's the advantage of that. So. <laughs> it's like when you're a writer, you think, I oh, know, I can make it really easy for Gav. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just was like, Gav, I just want to just do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> just try and be intelligent, is what I said. <laughs> One day, actually, did bring me up and they text me, I've done a new version of the script. After what we shot is what you've seen, that script, I've done a new version, what, what? I read it, it was going off in even further, do you remember that? And I said, yeah. no, we can't do that. Yeah. Said, okay, then no problem. Yeah. Oh, alright then. <laughs> yeah, I think at that point, I was happy to go off in another direction, but I it think it was like, oh, much. Let's just let's just finish something before we probably jump around. Love will be coming out of people's nose and ears yeah. if they watch the film. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I hope so. That's the plan. <laughs> was the was the writing very much a collaborative effort? I mean, obviously you took the bulk of the writing, but did you have an influence in that? Well, we did story Apart from ideas. Say, the exploding heads a little no, bit. No, we did the story <laughs> ideas and figure out what we could do. But then I was just like. Go with it. Yeah, what you want to do. I, I think we Why actually worked better. I actually said to, to the cat, first of all, I said to him, I'm the worst person you'll ever collaborate with because basically just leave me alone to write it. I did, I said that to you quite openly, didn't I? I, I, um, I switched off my writing brain. But I was um, just going all the dialogue um, was, was me. But then, yeah, some story ideas I would bring to Gav and say, look, I'm thinking this is where the arc is going to go. Yeah. Uh, what if we do this and this? And then Gav would, would obviously make suggestions which I'd put in, in the movie. So as far as. Well, story I was jumping ideas, on production yeah. things. Yeah. You know, say things, I'd say, well, we can't. Can't do that yeah. because of A and B. There's too much traffic. Yeah. We won't be able to call that because of sound or something. Yeah, we like can't wait. So I pop too up with those things, things like that. that. Oh, you know. And, um, uh, no bushido sticks. No bushido sticks. No, all, unfortunately, all, that's the next one, part two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I'd just let him go for it, write it, then he'd just give me a script, and literally, I'd, quite often, I'd kind of skim it, but on the day of shooting, I'd be like, okay, that's my lines, cool, 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 cool. Because I, I could trust <laughs> can, in can him. Couldn't be bothered, laziness is what you call well, that. Really, I can, <laughs> trust. I'm giving you trust right now. Oh, laziness, you pick. <laughs> yeah. So, so was, the, um, was the budget restrictions the reason you cast your salt in it, or did you just fancy kind of throwing your salt in front of the camera? We wanted to shoot, I wanted to be able to shoot it uh, whenever we could, when we were yeah. both around. And there were certain points in the week, it's like we were both around, no one else around. Well, let's just do it ourselves. Well, yeah. and that, that, that really ignited the story idea in the first place. Well, we're going to have to shoot this ourselves, what can we do? So that would start you know, coming up with ideas of what you can do with us as filmmakers. Definitely, yeah. Making a film. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm hugely vain, so I love to see. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean... Well, um, there's that one version of the script, but it's just you and your face just me. the whole movie. It's me and my face, minutes. that's the film. Yeah, that's the film. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm going to get made, I'm still pushing for that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, that's the not standing war film, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the we man looking to, at himself, uh, self approving. <laughs> <laughs> Over 100 hours. Yeah. <laughs> 100 hours and 100 pounds. Um, we, I think so, yeah. I mean, it was fun to do. I think the more we got into it, it naturally lended itself to that because, we, you know. Uh, the, I suppose the rapport that, um, well, when we started showing kind of test footage to people, they said, oh, there's, there's a great rapport between you two, which obviously, when you do things yourself, it's often difficult to see, you know, your, your own kind of kind of material yeah, on screen to actually judge what you're like. I'd never acted before at all, so Kevin just sort of stuck the camera in my face and went, go. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. So it gave a little more direction. And, um, uh, and, uh, go now. Go now. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Counted to three. Yeah, it was better, better You're than shit. What? Better than what? And that was good. So that was great. It was really fun. I think the first scene we shot is a scene that it's one of the, the few scenes that didn't make the cut, and it was in uh, it was in a loft. It, it was quite, a, I think, it was quite a funny scene. But when we came to shoot it, it, it just didn't work. We shot it several times with different angles and different stuff, and it was awful. So oh, that worried me. Day. That worried me a little bit when I was oh god, my acting here is awful. It was it was, it was really bad. Like, Hello, what are do how literally? are you doing? I was like coming up through a loft. Oh, the loft hatch is open. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Uh, well, and, on the same uh, day, we had some stuff we were gonna shoot, so we went out and did some exterior yeah. shots in the graveyard right at the beginning stuff, okay. and came back to it. came back to look at that editing, and was like, man, this looks really good, and it was really, I think having a, a, a better location. The loft didn't, we didn't really dress the loft or anything. That was more, I think, the thing. Yeah. We're going by this church on the grave. You've <laughs> already got like a certain atmosphere going on in the image. So just chucking us on top of the script and dialogue. And it worked really well. You were the Mac and the microphone. Well, like, yeah, <laughs> really Mac and the mic. Um, but that's, but since then, like, the feedback we've had uh, from the people that have seen it has been hugely positive. Strangely, <laughs> to me it's strange. 
the thing that people pick up on the most, is, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, is, <laughs> I'm laughing, is the acting. And they've gone, oh, it's, it's great, I really I'm, enjoyed I it. I was just like, going to say, the performances they, aren't they, nice. They, 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 they feel quite natural. They, yeah. that's what, I think that's, that's why you can get away with a lot in a film, because um, they are likeable characters from the very off. <laughs> just the audition process at the beginning is quite that's funny. That's sheer well, accent. That's what turns <laughs> down through yeah, as well, yeah. the fact that we're doing it really yeah. raw and gritter style But filming. it works really well. And I th yeah. but, but I think if you're... If you weren't likeable, then obviously the film is going to be a real tough sell. I mean, no, you, it, it, you know, you wouldn't get away with as much as you got away yeah. with, and you wouldn't be able to try as many tricks as you did and yeah. try twists yeah. as you did. So um, you mentioned Japanese cinema. Yeah. I mean, who would you say would be your prime influences then? Or oh, your inspiration? Well, well, cool. <laughs> um, it's probably not Japanese cinema for prime inspiration, but just for this. I mean, I watch a huge amount of film. Um, Probably currently, I don't watch an enormous amount of horror. I've probably seen a lot of a lot of sort of current horror stuff. We both have, but I'd say definitely, definitely at the moment, Gav watches more horror than I do. I think at the time we were watching horror non-stop, um, and I'd uh, you know, and, and I, I'd watched a ton as, as, as a kid. Now, you know, and obviously love love that genre, but it's, it's largely the older stuff um, that I enjoy. So. Um, there's a great French movie called Eyes Without a Face. There's, 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 really, there's no blood or gore in that at all. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, so I'm very much, I suppose drama was, was a big influence or drama based things. Um, my favorite filmmaker of all time is a guy, he's nothing to do with horror, called John Cassavetes, yeah. um, who's considered like the father of independent His cinema. Answer, he is, uh, Nick Cassavetes is, you know, directed, well. um, yeah, uh, Alpha Dog or something yeah. horrible. But um, he's, uh, he's, he's my, my sort of favorite filmmaker, so which all sort of lends itself to the style we shot, and then kind of how yeah, I like it, because he's say. very dialogue based, obviously, and he's very about um, a realism to it all. And obviously, we're making what is essentially, a, I suppose, a, a horror film, you know, with kind of drama and, and fantastic elements to it. Um, but I wanted to keep that dialogue as natural as possible. Um, anything I write, you know, when I used to write um, short stories, the dialogue in that is, is as natural as possible. So I suppose black comedy is very much my thing, as much as I can get away with comedy. And um, uh, like I say, natural dialogue, I think. Because I think yeah. it's what's missing in a lot of... Uh, obviously a film is a film as a product, but I think for me I sort of switch off, not all the time, but a lot of the time when the dialogue feels forced. Um, and as you, you said, and as people have picked up on, hopefully it comes across, across as natural. So I'd say Cassavetes was one, and then a lot of the old, uh, a lot of the old horror really. So, um, well, I was you know, Witch, old British, old found yeah, footage films, th like, things like that. I was literally watching as many found footage just for the whole filming style and stuff. So yeah. and, and the editing style as well, just to see what I can do. And, and without going on and doing the same thing that people have already seen, Blairish being like the granddaddy of the yeah, sort of, off, yeah. of the, yeah, of the, you know, in a wider spectrum of horror and stuff for found footage. And I was watching it quite cl closely, but at the same time, I really wanted to try and make a fresh film. And I think we did anyway for that, that mixed the halfway point turn. Anyway. Yeah, and it's we referenced, obviously, film. we did reference the Blair Witch concept, and that, that's the point, my, my idea was, well, let's attack it head on, because obviously yeah. there's so many found footage films get released, but which, which, kind of sidestep it and I go well actually let, let's play with these kind of conventions yeah. and that, that, that to me is a natural way to kind of exploit and say yeah look we know you're doing this we know it's a, it's a, it's a couple of guys running around in the woods which I think I say in the film you know uh, my character says in the film no it's um, very self aware yeah, yeah. And it is yeah. you know and there's, a, there's a difficult line with doing self aware stuff I didn't want it to become some post modern kind of jaunt like oh it's a self aware I really was. I really wanted to kind of pull it back from that, and hopefully it, it does. Hopefully, and, and no, it then comes to become this. It doesn't come across as pretentious. Yeah, or that was too smart. Arse or or anything like that. Because there is all that. Because especially, <laughs> especially it could come across as a vanity project. The fact that yeah, of course, he was really <laughs> oh, it director, and we were acting <laughs> and stuff. And really, it came down to the fact that we're just trying to make something as easily as possible as we possibly could. Yeah, and that was fun. With cost, you know, production everything else, life as well, getting in the way of that, trying to make a film. And, and I suppose for me as well, from writing and also from the um, production point of view, that the sort of input that I had, it was going back to these, to go back to your, your question, um, I suppose a lot of the, the British school of filmmakers, so people like Shane Meadows, Mike Lee, who are, I know that's, they're more sort of drama based, you know, um, who were big fans of, you know, so, so to keep that, we really wanted that kind of uh, Britishness, I suppose. Um, yeah. No, yeah. the humour's very British, it feels very Yeah, British. I think, you know, things like Old Hammer Horror, you know, I'm a big fan of the Old Hammer Horror ho horror stuff, the TV series, you know, uh, as well. A lot of that was shot actually near where we, where we live. Um, and that that's really what sort of inspired me to kind of do it, that sort of creeping tension, you know, in there and that sort of drama element. I think, 
a lot of, of not all, but a lot of recent horror is sort of lost, lost really. So yeah, yeah. yeah. They're obviously accepted. No, it's a lot changing genre. I mean, well, I think it's because it's just become so commercial. Because it's, I mean, like we were talking earlier before we started filming about how commercial the industry is, and like Cas someone like Cassavetes, it's going to be hard. It'd be hard for someone like him to break through <laughs> now as a director. I mean, obviously, he was a, yeah. he was a big time actor as well. Of course, yeah. Be, be, Which means because of his day, projects, they weren't his, his films weren't particularly commercial films. No, not at all. I mean, and he yeah, openly, yeah. obviously, rejected Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A great actor, though. I like Cassavetes. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dozen. Yeah, Dozen. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Colombo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's his baby? And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what about you as an inspiration? I mean, you mentioned that you've done a lot of research. You, you watched a lot of found footage. I was, films, I was, I yeah, I was a lot of horror. Taking in as much found footage as possible, get anything yeah. I could get my hands on, just to make sure we weren't going to step on anything which was coming out and what, modern. Well. What about when you decided to go into filmmaking? Originally? Filmmaking that originally, that well, for me, it's, it's pretty much someone like Robert Rodriguez and John Carpenter. Those Carpenter, guys. I love Carpenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, my music, all my and stuff yeah, was yeah. very much influenced by Carpenter and stuff. The way yeah. he, well, he was, a, he was, a, he's a fantastic composer as well, Carpenter. Yeah, yeah. I'm off to see him this year. Are you really? Halloween. He's playing in London. He's really? playing a gig. We'll have to talk about this. I'm lovely to see him because he's released albums now as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Lost Wings too. Yeah, Lost Wings too. Yeah, I saw that coming up. But that those guys for me, I think Robert Rodriguez more. Not all Robert Rodriguez's films as such, because some of the films are okay, but it's more of his ethic of filmmaking, yeah. where you sort no, of agree, do it yeah. yourself and just get it on and do it. And that with John Carpenter's, just the way he composes some of his shots and stuff. Like, even though we're doing rough round found footage filming, I'd still make sure I was trying to compose the shots the best that I could to fit the scene and like the dialogue and all that sort of stuff so yeah i'd say those two guys really sort of the influence i think yeah i mean it's funny because again before we start recording we were talking about um especially the horror audience the horror community they can be very forgiving if they know that <laughs> if they or if they feel like the effort's gone into the film you know they'll let a lot go yeah so even if it's not the greatest film they'll appreciate it because they know that the filmmakers have come from the right angle or they've, they've given it a good go and i think you're saying with rodriguez rodriguez is that even when his films aren't great, you can still appreciate a lot about his films because yeah, yeah. you know yeah, it's yeah, the film that he, you always get the impression it's that's passion, yeah. it's yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's a ton of films I could reel off which aren't necessarily my favourite films, but I watch wow. them or enjoy them because yeah. I understand perhaps you know the context that they're made in or, or, or as you say, there's some sort of passion and they're like, yeah, because it's an interesting kind of interesting take on it and that's and I'm, uh, hopefully people can see that, <laughs> hopefully, with ours, you know what I mean? It, it's the, yeah. that, that that's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We, just, we, yeah. we did yeah. what we heard. Because you, you lecture on films as well, don't you? Oh, bits and pieces. Um, I wouldn't say I went to my main. I mean, I was a teacher, yeah. but um, I have done. Yeah, I used to. I, uh, I, I did A level, so yeah. and then I've done uh, uni work. But uni's not film; it's education related. So, I mean, no, but, um, <laughs> it, I, I sort of brought film into it. Because the reason I bring it up yeah. is because I'm thinking, you're like, obviously, you're going out making films. So yeah. I mean, you, you talk about films. Yeah. yeah talking about and saying back structure and all that. Do you find when you're writing you're thinking, well, I can't write that because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell my students oh, about this and I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise this to my yeah, students. Yeah, interestingly, I had, uh, it's not my student, a friend of mine, I had a, uh, one of his students emailed me actually uh, over the weekend to ask about script writing and uh, she's doing it for a final project at A-level. And uh, <laughs> um, she said, oh, and she's asked about structure. And I said, yeah, I've just, interestingly, last year finished a film which blows everything I'm about to tell you out of the water. So don't watch that film ever. <laughs> so um, at least not while you're, you're kind of doing this. Uh, it was more after it. I was like, oh, God, are people going to actually... I mean, when I wrote it, I thought no one's going to actually watch this. I thought two people would see it full stop. So <laughs> it was like, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, but then the more people that saw it, the more people that liked it, I was like, oh dear, perhaps I should have had some awareness because people are going to kind of judge this and say, well, actually, you said this and you've done this. I mean, that's not what Sir said yeah, to us. Sort of, sort, of, what, sort, of, sort of whatever, really, do you know what I mean? Um, when I've done the uni stuff, it, it's fine because, of course, they're completely forgiving and, they don't, and they'll have never seen... Uh, anything I've done, <laughs> and, uh, but, um, but funnily enough, yeah, when you get sort of A level and stuff, they're obviously naturally they're probably more inquisitive or, yeah. or even certain they, they want to go and find stuff out and they'll uh, you know expose you on anything they can. So um, so uh, I, I suppose yes and no really to answer your question. I just sort of wrote it and then thought I know what I've done. I know um, what I'm doing with structure. I think most people have picked up on that as well. You know, a couple of people have said. Oh well, it, it doesn't really. It does this, and this is obviously an accident. Well, no. I mean, I understand what I'm doing with, with script writing. You know, I've studied it yeah. and, uh, and taught it at fairly high levels. So, um, 
and a lot of my friends do it, you know, um, much more successfully than I have done. And so I'm aware, and it was just a case of, well, let, let's buck that trend, let's go with it. Yeah, why see, not? See where it takes you. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why Which not? Is, I mean, it, and it feels, it feels like it feels like a very natural process to film. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a clever film. It's nice and quirky. It's, yeah. It drags you in, and you don't really feel like that. I've been really lucky because since we started this, I mean, like um, you're the you're the third people we've interviewed, and luckily all the films I've watched I've liked because it's quite scary, you know. You're watching it, and like, again, we were talking about this before. Um, if you you know if you're going to sit down and chat to someone about their film, you want to like it because hey, you've got to bluff your way through it otherwise. But but it's three out of three so far, and it's funny Rodriguez has come up nearly every time I think. Cause Dust Dust Till Dawn seems like a really popular. Well, funny enough, Dust Dawn's got a good film. midpoint turn, hasn't it? Really. What, just to, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to do, yeah. Well, it's, it's yeah. made as a gangster film. It's styled as a gangster yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. It breaks out into a horror. Yeah, which yeah. makes it brilliant. It's, it's great. It's great. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. It's, it's really enjoyable. Yeah. That's great. Um, right, guys. Did you have any questions? Um, yeah. Who is your favorite uh, filmmaker in London in terms of horror movies, or actors, or writers, or actress? In London. Yeah. You've been watching with, or you're aware of? Um. Filmmaker in London. <laughs> we can, we can spread it to England. Exactly. Okay. 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 <laughs> the French are so they're so pinpoint. <laughs> the North North London. Let's <laughs> bring it down. English guy. I don't know. That's a hard one actually. Are there any, are there any filmmakers on the independent circuit that you enjoy? See, because I see quite a lot of things. Come you go to a lot of festivals. Yeah, yeah Gavin so more, things more come through to answer this. And it kind of me. Quite, oh, quite often, you know, you sort of do one sort of film, then you don't just hear or see anything. So yeah. It's quite hard. I don't, I can't, I, I don't know. I'm, you've stumped me. That feels really, I said, it sort of sounds really bad as well. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll take some of the pressure off slightly. I can only think of this. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. A, uh, I think a, a friend of mine, uh, a guy I know, uh, a guy called uh, Jeffrey Harmer. He's he's local to where I, I live. He made a great little short called Selfie, um, which was then. Um, Another version of it came out much later, actually, called, I think, Selfie from Hell, which became viral. Interestingly, his film, his short, predates that by, um, I think, about four or five months. Um, and I, I think his is a, a much better version. It's, it's, it's much sharper. Um, so he, he's great. He's doing horror. Uh, and then, I suppose, um, who else? I mean, there's a few guys you know who I know, but I've not really seen a lot of their films at the moment, just because a lot of them are in post-production, I would say. Uh, I'm hopefully working with a guy soon called Mark Brennan. He's not necessarily a horror director. Um, he's just done a great little short called T for Two. It's a sort of, I want to say it's a sort of love story drama -y with a kind of sci-fi twist, I suppose. But I know he, he's possibly looking into doing some sort of horror-based stuff as well. Um, but that's just purely local to me. Mm -hmm. um, as far as London and independent filmmakers in this sort of area, um, I wish I could say loads. I don't because probably less than, see Gav should have all the answers here. Um, I kind of go to things less than Gavin because I write, I naturally just sit at home just it's, looking you know, at screens. There are so, so, <laughs> so many, there are so many, it's hard to kind of pare it down yeah, to well, one. Well I do two. know, you know, because I do know a lot of the British filmmakers and yeah. stuff. Um, but the Sunderland, I haven't even seen a lot of the films, that's the thing. Like Liam Reagan has just made oh, Banjo. Course, yeah. Like I've still not seen the film yet, but that's doing really well and doing festival mm. circuit and stuff like that. Then I have just done a short film, uh, 60, uh, 60 Seconds to Die, which is basically you showed, a load of different yeah, 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 which is basically a load of different filmmakers have done that, and that's that's a couple of British filmmakers, uh, Tony Newton and Dan Brownlee, and the, those guys are doing stuff. But yeah, there, there is a, there is a lot of us as well. There's a lot of British films. There and there's a lot of good talent out there as well. There is. Yeah. So it's really hard to pinpoint. Nice. Yeah. You know, is that yeah. people how, in that film? How do you two know each other? Uh, Living in the same town, we were um, we were sort of, we were fans of film, and we just sort of knew each other. Yeah, we were sort of few mutual friends, really, isn't it? And we would so just sort of say hello and chat. It was an ad in the personal yeah, no. column. After I yeah. make my first, <laughs> <laughs> make my first filmmaker looking for cinema. Another bearded filmmaker looking for cinema. <laughs> 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 yeah. After I make my first, for love. <laughs> and it wasn't there for that reason. Yeah, it was there for that reason. We both know. <laughs> subconsciously. Oh, completely consciously. There's nothing subconscious about it. <laughs> I made my first feature film and uh, he watched it and, and out of the blue just sent me a message saying I've just finished doing like, some script writing stuff. Do you yeah, want to write a movie? Do you want to make it? Yeah, we're going to write a movie. Brilliant, write it. We, well, I've not really talked about this, but it was done as 
it wasn't originally intended for this, but I was doing a, I was finishing off my masters down in Winchester Uni, and it became essentially my final uh, project for, for, for the for the degree, which it wasn't the intention at all, but it's just because. I'd spent so much time faffing around with the script for this that all the other stuff had sort of fallen by the wayside. So it seemed sensible to to do that. But um, so that's how that came about, which I sort of forgot. But yeah, we, as you said, really, we just met through, and I was sort of, I just started that course, or I think it was just prior to starting that course. I we'd known each other in a sort of Facebook friends, um, you know, um, you know, uh, through mutual friends when we were younger because we went to close schools and we were a similar age. And I just messaged you, didn't I, saying, oh, well, are you still directing stuff? The thing is, I've always, I've always get these stuff. messages from people, oh, I'm going to do this, and it's like, okay, yeah, cool. But he came through, so it, did, it, yeah. it, was, it was quite nice to actually have that. I go, okay, cool, let's do something, because yeah. it's, you know, as you get all these messages quite often, it's nice to have the message, it's brilliant. And, and then absolutely. you start putting the effort yeah. into it, and it all comes off. Yeah, it's very different, didn't it? It wasn't preternatural at all to start with, it was a very different movie. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a series of sort of interesting Kind of fiction type style, wasn't it? Yeah, you can see that completely. It's so popular. I've seen this like a pulp fiction of horror. No, we were going to try and do short films, we were trying to, again, figure out a cheap way of making a film. Yeah. Or if we make a, a load of short films, but then we'd realise that they're so going to go in a bigger universe. I, I thought yeah, that's, like that's, more pictures, of, um, that's yeah, another yeah. way of doing it. it. It hasn't been done in the horror world yet. Not yet. I, mean, I, I sort yeah. of thought that uh, Amores Pedros, the, the, the Spanish film, uh, Amores Pedros, which is, does a similar, a similar thing where it links three, three excuse me, three stories, and I've done something like that in fiction, um, where they're all short stories that can be read individually or read as a whole. Yeah. And uh, that was the idea of the, the film originally, but it, it's, it's nothing. Span off. You can always go back to that one. Yeah, yeah, um, nothing like that. Sound, Ivan? Hi, this is Ivan Trooper here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm coming late to these questions, so I'm hoping you can answer two for me, if you don't mind. Um, first one, do you enjoy or have you watched Little Shop of Horrors? What do you think of it? Which version? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah, just going to say, which version? Seymour, the sing-along one? The musical. The musical, the musical. come on. Start with that one first, at least. Well... Confession time, never seen it. Got a copy at home, my kids have seen it. Tell me all the people are in it, Bill Murray and all that stuff. Yeah, seen great it, film, I love that. Not film. seen it. Not seen it. Steve, um, Steve Martin. Steve Martin, Steve Martin yeah. Steve yeah. Murray's it's in Bill it. Bill Murray's in it. Bill right? Rick I love it. When I saw it, I'll tell you what, when I saw it, it's one of those films, so I grew up in the 80s, so all these type of films, all these, you know, Robert Zemeckis, Ivan Reitman movies, I've seen and love. Uh, Back to the Future is incredible, you know, Ghostbusters is uh, outstanding. Script wise, it's incredible. Uh, in Groundhog Day, you're moving a bit further on. Weirdly, little, I've seen Little Shop of Horrors. It was one of the last ones I saw um, because it freaked me out as a kid. Because the plant talks and he's like, feed me some more. It was so weird. That, um, and I'd seen much weirder stuff, you know, especially if you grew up in the 80s where, you know, VHS was, you could just, anyone could watch it. Um, but it really freaked me out. So I really enjoy it now, but back then, I don't know, to be honest. It's taken me a long time to really enjoy it. It's got everyone I love in it, you know, Steve Martin, of course, yeah. Rick Moranis. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's a great movie, but I, I'd have to re-watch it, because it's one of the few 80s movies I haven't re-watched in probably about five or six years, I'm, I'm afraid. Do you so, like it then? So. Are you a big fan? I'm a massive fan. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> really sorry that I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen yeah, probably yeah. every other movie in the world. I've seen it. I would assume like, like people from the horror industry would yeah, obviously... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I've yeah, got a copy at home, my kids have seen it. That's I'm like saying that you've never seen E.T. That's I, amazing. Have you seen I don't too? like E.T. I've oh. seen E.T. It's the first pirate video I ever saw in the 80s. I think that was the first pirate video I ever saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, I was going to say that it's, it's a good one to bring up because it's fairly unique, actually. It, it, it combines so many different genres, which I suppose ours, well, Ghostbusters does to an extent. It's such a, a kind of cross-blend of different things. I think it's really interesting. Uh, it's a really interesting one to pick up, and it's one I've, I've definitely got to... I haven't seen it in probably five or six years. I was saying the original ending of Little Shop for Horace is completely different to how that's it's the Roger Corman one, isn't it? It's a, no, the Roger Corman one's Jack Jack Nicholson, oh, wasn't it? Was no, the musical. Was Frank Oz. Yeah, Frank yeah. Oz did the. Was um, oh, there three of them? Frank no two ones. Frank Oz did the. Um, I think Roger Corman produced the Jack Nicholson one. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, and then uh, Frank Oz directed the musical one with Steve Martin. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. oh, yeah. The original ending of the Steve Martin one. It's, just complete, it's like a monster movie. Well, it's really like yeah, they go, it's, it's they go very rampaging through the scene. Yeah, but the it's a good really <laughs> What was your second question? Because you have to be extra. Well, you know, I was late and I just wanted to, you know. Um, last question 
you you keep on talking about the budget, how it was hundred pound. But <laughs> what would you say would be the most important aspect of when you're spending money? What would be the most important thing you would spend that hundred pound on? If now, you, like if you don't want to, like um, I'm making the question long, but I'm just thinking of you don't want to. Now let me start again. You've got hundred pounds. What is the most important thing you will spend first with that hundred pounds? Okay. That's the question I should say. Okay, you can remix it as well if you want. Now, <laughs> generally in filmmaking, it should go on food to give anyone who's involved because food keeps everyone going and everyone happy. We didn't do that. We, we, we did sandwiches one day, then we told everybody you have to bring your own sandwiches. So we didn't even bother with that. What did it go on? Props for the. It went on, we're the, again, we're the one, worst one people to ask, effect, despite having made a feature for £100, because what we use the money on are the things you see least in the film. So in it the is. film you see a, a hall, which was 30 or 50 quid or something, was it, I think? And then there are, not to ruin too much, but there are wings at the end, which, which was basically the remainder of the budget, along with some, some clothes, um, some sort of cloth stuff. Uh, and then the things you see least in the entire film. So you're probably asking the wrong people. But yeah, I'd go with Gav. It's probably um, it would be food. If, if you're gonna, if but you should do food, food. Yeah. yeah then, it's kind of nice to keep the actors alive, isn't it? Really. Yeah. That's well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep them fun. happy as well. Do you know I mean, at least until they do their lines. But at least until then. <laughs> and if it's a horror movie, the next one would be special effects. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's ultimately. Yeah. I suppose. The, I suppose the main one. Yeah, it, it's 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 pre-production. It's it's marketing. Obviously, is, is where you want to spend all your money if you can. Yeah. Because that, you that's, never think of it though, that's you, with, really? uh, well, well, I think really we did, didn't we? We did, because we said if we spend no money, we will have maybe more, more money to money spend to on spend marketing, or at least, festival yeah. 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 So, so probably marketing is, is always going to be the, is where you want to put your money, really, because you can have, as I'm sure we all know, the worst movie in the world that, that's marketed well, will we'll still sell. Yeah, will still sell, of course, so yeah. it's all marketing, really. There is a trailer, there's an old teaser trailer which we made last year, which you can, if you type in preternatural, P-R-E-N-A-T. Uh, we'll put, we'll put the link. Oh, we'll yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, um, go, um, go for it. Okay, that's fine. Right. Preternatural 2015 uh, into YouTube, you will find it. If you search us on Facebook under Preternatural 2015, you will find it there. If you search for Deadbolt Films, you will find it there. And if you search for um, A Gang of Giants, you will find it there as well. Preternatural 2015, it's also on IMDb. But yeah, you'll find the teaser. It's not up yet, as Gav says. We've yeah. got festivals we're doing at the moment, and then we're going to hopefully look for some sort of distribution. If all else fails, we then have been offered we've been offered something, um, um, but we've got to obviously which will up be online. Everybody yeah, in the public so. themselves to see it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's what's next for you guys? Uh, I'm working on an idea at the moment. Um, another feature possibly and I'm going to carry on doing a few music videos and short films and stuff because it's just enjoyable to do that yeah, yeah. and I'm, I do a podcast called, called the podcast on Haunted Hill which is a regular thing podcast. to keep doing yeah. which is quite nice because it turns me into a film review almost and I can dissect films last night I watched Hostel because we're going to cover that for our Valentine's special Lovely. that's all really because that is a perfect Perfect Valentine's so, uh, like, It's nice to be able to dissect you know. films though in that capacity because yeah. I never did before because I've got to speak about it. Yeah, so it's quite nice to do that. But what are you up to? Anything much? Nothing at all. Um, no, there's, a few, there's a few bits and pieces I've got working on. There's, there's a short I've got hopefully coming out. Um, I've written quite a lot and it's deciding where do I want to take those. Yeah. Um, because I've had, it's one of those things, I said January I'm going to kind of relax on filming and do other, the other bits and pieces I do. Uh, that hasn't happened in January. Everything has sort of kicked off and I've had I and then we collectively for this as well and individually have had lots of different pieces, bits and pieces come my way so I'm literally this weekend pretty much and next weekend trying to figure out where I'm going to take that but there's a short coming out hopefully um, relatively soonish um, which we're going to do and then okay. late, later in the year more stuff when I've sort of pushed the other backlog I'm going to kind of go through it again. Cool. So I'd like to try and do another short again. Yeah. Us guys more. I think more we're looking. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be working together again. Um, I think. Right? It's, yeah, I think I'm, 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 acting wise, I think there's there's something obviously there which people have picked up on. So if nothing else, I think um, from an acting front, it would be a uh, it would be quite fun to do, even if it's a, a silly thing in one of our cars. <coughs> yeah. No, but I think um, yeah, hopefully you do work. Good. I'd like to see what what else you can come up with. <laughs> yeah. um, but preternatural, check preternatural out on the festival circuit. You can find it. Keep your eyes open. I'm sure it'll be released at some point soon. I so too. Um, and check out their other stuff. Check them out on IMDb. Just check them out if you want. You can <laughs> freeze frame. <It's> okay. uh, <laughs> I will be. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, thanks to both of you for joining us. Thank you so much. And the best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. We'll see more of you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.